What we're going to do now, we're going to recap the Germantown football season, the run to the playoffs. Uh, Germantown, as you can see here, starts off with Booker T. Washington. Uh, this is a game Germantown plays just about every year at Germantown Stadium. Booker T. comes out for the game. Uh, it was a typical Germantown game, lined up, ran the football, got control of the game early, uh, never relinquished the lead. A lot of scoring. Germantown scored 44 points. Um, just wore uh, Booker T. Washington out 44 to nothing. Uh, the next game was against uh, West Memphis, Arkansas. You see there Howard Moss breaking off a big run early. Uh, this game actually went back and forth for a while. you got to give uh, West Memphis a lot of credit. They struggled on defense, so uh, they did give up a lot of points, but their offense was uh, really in high gear most of the game. They were able to score 21 points against the Germantown defense. You see Mark Bowen there with an interception for a touchdown. Uh, but Germantown got control of the game, gave up some uh, a late uh, touchdown in the third quarter. Uh, West Memphis did, just did not want to go away, but uh, Germantown showing their passing game, which no one had seen in about three years in, uh, in the game, and so Germantown was able to open up their offense, and their defense played better once he got his feet back under him, so Germantown won 41-21. to Next game was at uh, Warren County. They went to McMinnville, Tennessee. Big matchup there. Very physical game. McMinnville, a real strong program, came ranked, uh, came in ranked in the top five. Uh, Germantown was able to score on their opening drive. And then their defense really came rose to the occasion. Germantown did not give up an, a point the entire game. Uh, their defense really was strong. Uh, they came out in the second half. Germantown scored on the opening drive of the second half, and then basically at that point we're able to sort of salt it away. You see neighbors there with a big run in the uh, second half to set Germantown up for a touchdown. So Germantown won that game uh, 14 to nothing in Middle Tennessee. So the game after that was against MUS. Uh, so MUS Germantown, there's a rivalry, crosstown rivalry, you might say. Uh, tight game as they all wore. Germantown uh, won last year uh, on a late interception um, in the game, and Germantown was able to score at the end of the first half on a Hail Mary to go up uh, by 10, 10 to nothing at that point. Germantown uh, played good defense once again, won the game 16 to 6. So the next game up for Germantown was against uh, Pine Bluff, Arkansas with uh, the legendary Eric Mitchell. We've heard a lot about Eric Mitchell, and it, it's all true. You can see Eric Mitchell here taking a uh, snap in, out in open field. Uh, if he gets in open field and he's got space, he's almost impossible to bring down. So uh, Pine Bluff came back and answered. This game was was tight the entire way. Uh, you know, Germantown playing uh, good defense, just gave up some really big plays to Eric Mitchell. I think it's the most points Germantown uh, gave up all year long uh, by giving up uh, 21 points. Uh, one of those games where it really could have gone either way. Uh, Germantown missed a field goal opportunity, which uh, could have changed the outcome of the game. But at this, you know, in all reality, it came down to just an individual effort by Eric Mitchell. Uh, and 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 you know, give Pine Bluff credit; they've got a lot of uh, a lot of talent on that team, on the rest of the team as well. They've got a long, strong history in uh, the playoffs over in Arkansas. But Germantown was able to score, tie the ball game up, uh, then decided to go for two. We've got Germantown ahead, uh, 15 to 14, late in the game, late in the fourth quarter, with about two and a half minutes left, or I'm just kidding, six and a half minutes left. Uh, Tom Bluff ran a back to quarterback pass, as you can see here with Eric Mitchell, just a fantastic, you know, play. I mean, just a heck of a catch. He fumbled the ball, but was able to recover. And then once again, the Magic Man goes to work. He just, he just, individual effort to find a way to get into the end zone. And Germantown was unable to score on their last drive. Uh, next game here against Bartlett, Tennessee. Bartlett opened up strong. Uh, this is a, an old rivalry. Goes way back. They took on their opening drive, got the ball all the way on a long run, all the way down to the three-yard line. Um, Bartlett came to play. Uh, Bartlett goes up early, seven to nothing, and got the extra point, two-point conversion to go up eight to nothing. 
Uh, just you know, just really came out strong. Played good defense. Uh, Germantown was able to answer. Uh, finally, things got going in the second half. Didn't give up any points in the second half. Tied it up 15 to 15 to get into overtime, and then Germantown was able to win the game in overtime. So a pivotal game there because the winner of that game would would did win end up winning the district. So Germantown won 21 15. Next matchup was in Millington, Tennessee. Uh, Millington stacked the line of scrimmage most of the game, so Germantown did does something that you didn't see years ago. They just threw the ball. They uh, they had uh, four touchdowns. Uh, four or neighbors was had four uh, touchdown throws. A really strong effort. Uh, it just goes to show you the you know, the uh, flexibility of the Germantown offense. Uh, you can see here a lot of them were deep outs, uh, deep uh, posts. Uh, just a, a great individual effort by Bond Tubbs as well. But Germantown uh, just came out and threw the football because, once again, you know, they Millington stacked the line of scrimmage and just that was what was available. So they win that game. They go on next, next week to come back to Germantown, Tennessee after two road games. And you see Chris Coppins there breaking a big one off on the second play from scrimmage against Christian Brothers. And at that point, it was just uh, all off to the races for Germantown. Uh, they really never looked back in that game. Uh, just really a domination by by Germantown on offense and defense. Um, every time they got the ball, they scored. I'm not sure they punted the entire game. Uh, it was just one of those games where just complete domination, the final 44-7. And then last week's game against Briarcrest, uh, Gerald Lowe takes the opening kickoff, runs all the way down to the 42-yard line, and then Chris Coppage, a la... Christian Brothers takes the pitch on 54 pitch and just breaks it off again right up the middle as he did the week before. And uh, Germantown goes on to uh, beat Briarcrest by a score 34 to 13. Uh, Germantown, Tennessee. Germantown hosted the Munford Cougars. Uh, last game of the season. Germantown comes in eight and one. Munford comes in struggling at three and six. Uh, Germantown's defense was just, just relentless as usual from the very first snap uh, just recovered the first uh, fumble on the first possession then they got a field goal after it next possession same thing Germantown just played really good defense Germantown secondary with the big interception takes the ball over and then Germantown just marched down the field throwing the ball running the ball you see Howard Moss there with a nice reception down the side and then of course that vaunted running game so Germantown had everything hitting on all cylinders. Uh, really powerful uh, effort by Germantown. Um, you know they they went up early and then things sort of went their way. Also, you know, with some a uh, few mistakes that were made by Munford. But the the defense was really stout all game, coach. And then and then once again Germantown showed everything they can do. There's a nice scramble by uh, uh, Forest Neighbors. Uh, everything was working for Germantown that day. The running game, like I said, was strong. And then here you see Neighbors back on the pass, uh, kind of rolling to his right, throwing down the field, and finding Bon Tubbs right there over the middle. Um, there's Germantown once again, just stayed with their running game, just uh, power football nonstop throughout the game, and then they would go outside. So, you know, everything was working there. Pitch to George Cantu. Uh, Munford got down at the end of the game and did get a late score uh, but Germantown was able to uh, play a lot of people nice pass there by the sophomore uh, Brian Donnelly to uh, Buzz Walthall and then he's running a little option himself so a lot of people got playing time last game of the season they honored their seniors uh, it's a really good way to go out you know Germantown uh, just doing what Germantown does running the football mixing in the pass to keep you honest so uh, just a, a good all-around performance and once again their defense was just relentless as usual that's about all you can say about it so we have some highlights looking to lead up to it you got germantown's coming to the state championship with a lot of momentum and it started with lexington getting at home so they came against lexington lexington came in with a fantastic team that had a great record really good running back and had been beating on people pretty well but boy they ran into a team that was just clicking on all cylinders. The offense was going strong. Neighbors had a great game. He, uh, the option game was really clicking. That was a big play that was working for them that night. And they just overpowered a team that came in there. Lexington tried to come back a couple of times, but they just couldn't get any momentum. And 
Germantown just didn't give them any breathing room through it. And gosh, it was just more of the same. They power through and power through, use their size, use their experience, and use what was starting as their momentum. They ended the regular season on a high, and boy, they just continued to do the first round of the playoffs. They beat a really good Lexington team handily and even had a chance to rest some guys at the end of the game, making them even more healthy than they were. That offense was doing this thing. Look at the linemen were blocking downfield. They had big plays. They had it all. They had the big play going. They didn't have to throw the ball a lot. They only had one completion for the night. And the rest of it, they had over 400 yards of offense. And then all but 18 of it was on the ground. And there's the one pass they had. So when they yeah. had to, they had a chance to make it work. Just so they give everybody something to look at on the film to look at for around the state. So they carried that momentum throughout that game. It was a great way to start off the playoffs at home. Yeah, Lexington just never had an answer. They just tried to get something late and just nothing. And the defense wasn't having any of it. So as excited as Germantown is to have that 41 points to build on the board, I think they were just as happy to have the zero coming up for Lexington because they came in with a high-powered offense, with a lot of motion, a lot of speed, and just couldn't get anything done. Yeah, just, uh, you know, once again, just trying to get something at the end of the game, Lexington was, and, and Germantown just just literally won going away. I mean, just ran all over that team. Just 41 to nothing is quite dominating. Yeah, they didn't have any weaknesses, especially that part of the season when you got two teams that are coming there with a lot of strength to walk out with that kind of a dominating win is something that they took the, the uh, momentum into their next game against Central, which is a Liberty Bowl stadium, which is a different environment for them. So it was technically it was a home game. They played it in the Liberty Bowl, and you know, it was a little bit more of the same. So they went up against a good central team that had won handily the week before, but they ran into that Germantown momentum that was just clicking. And, boy, they were going on all cylinders. There's Howard Moss breaking open, looking all over the field, trying to find those openings. And confidence is an interesting thing. Once you get it, you start believing in yourself. And they had all parts of the game clicking, even the kicking game. Mike Witt kicked in a long field goal. So all special teams, offense, defense, were all clicking on all cylinders. Yeah, and, you know, and, and Gal, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, Central came in with a, a strong running game, and you know, with a really high-rated uh, running back, and just had no success against that defense. Well, I think they were anticipating being able to hang with Germantown, and any time they, they wanted to be in the game, they used to get a break, go their way, and they never did. Germantown didn't make any mistakes. They didn't give any openings. They didn't give any in any space, and boy, they just had nothing to do. Every time they looked up and tried something, Germantown was waiting there to take care of whatever they brought to them. They could counter whatever punch they were getting, and of course, anytime they get it down near the goal line, they're going to punch that in. Yeah, you know, the, the just uh, you know, you see the turnover there with Moss with the big interception. I mean, they just Germantown was just once again hitting on all cylinders. I mean, it looked like a team that came to collect a check. I mean, they, they, they showed up thinking they were going to win that game, and it was just a matter of time. But, boy, they had it all going. You've seen everything just in these short highlights. You've seen passes. You've seen runs. You've seen interceptions. You've seen big hits, dominating defense, and it was like that all night long. Yeah, I mean, it, you, you know, once again, Central came in kind of on a little bit of a roll. They'd won their last five games, and they just saw a Germantown defense that threw the ball. They ran the ball. They went inside, outside. Just you know, Central had no answer. Well, it was a good crowd and a big night. And, of course, this was essentially to get out of Memphis. So, you know, the team after this go, was, was going to go to Middle Tennessee to play and then eventually to the East. So this is really the Battle of West Tennessee. So they were expecting a great competition. But, boy, Germantown came out fast and hard and kept the pressure on throughout the game. Yeah, you know, Germantown was even able to give a lot of uh, a lot of backups a lot of playing time, just increasing that depth, and there's your final. 35-8, to eight, which took them to the Gallatin. The Gallatin came into the game, ranked number one in the state. Pretty much everybody was predicting that was going to be the team that was going to get them. So they had to go to Gallatin. The whole town was shut down, and they all showed up at the game. So it was a huge crowd. You can tell by the highlights. They even had people standing four deep all around the outside of it. But, boy, Germantown came out right off the bat and brought it to them. They had a pin deep, and the defense was swarming all over the place. Now, they had a quarterback that was good, and they had a, had a wide receiver that everybody had been talking about was going to be a big player for them. But they never got a chance to get going because Germantown kept that pressure on throughout the entire game. They and you could, you could see the big Germantown crowd there in the background. I mean, Germantown brought a lot of people as well. It was a big crowd at that game, like about 8,500 people. They had busloads of people coming up from Germantown to go, come into Middle Tennessee, so it was going to be a big rivalry. They kind of knew 
Uh, this, this, whoever won this game was going to have a, a great opportunity to win a state championship. So it was kind of that feeling this might be, um, you know, whoever wins this game might be able to carry it forward. So there's a little extra dynamic going on with that. But Germantown came out fast and hungry and ready and really hit them by the time Gallatin looked up. The game was pretty much over. Yeah, big fumble recovery there, there by Germantown. They took every opportunity. Every time they got the ball, uh, they just took the ball and just pounded it. I mean, if you turn the ball over and give Germantown the ball, they're going to score. Well, and then they they, don't, they did found out they didn't have a weakness, and that was one of the things that some of the coaches and some of the other uh, fans were saying after the game. Well, after playing Germantown, they realized they did not have any weaknesses. So anything they thought they were going to do, Germantown had an answer for throughout that night. And, guys, here's another great run. The option was clicking, the misdirection was clicking, the back, the running back, the linemen were doing their job and clearing out holes, and it was just classic Germantown football. Yeah, Gallatin got a late score on a field goal, but that was it. The whistle sounds, Bells comes forward, it boosts the ball, it's a long driving kick coming down to the two-yard line to Holloman. Holland takes it at that point, back to the 10, 15, finds the seam, he breaks it to the 20, he's in the open, one man to stop him, that's Jim Bells, he's run out of bounds over on the far sideline at the 40-yard line. Neighbors to the line, third and seven, takes the ball, fakes the pitch back, looks down the field, heavy pressure being applied, Clay Henderson breaks loose, the ball down the field, and... It's complete. Second and long takes the ball. Pitch back to Coppage. Coppage trying to break outside. Has a block. Into the end zone. Touchdown for Germantown. Bills and Bible in the backfield. Third and seven at the Patriot 38. Woods takes a snap. Rolls back. Pass out here. Completes Brent Collins. Collins moves across the 45 and appears to be just short of a first down. Walthall waiting the snap with three minutes left to go. The snap is back. The Kemp on its way, an end over end kick. Cup tries to field it and fumbles the ball. It's bouncing around and been picked up by Germantown. Neighbors to line second and go. Handoff goes to Coppage. Coppage dies. Touchdown for Germantown. First and 10 Patriots. As Woods awaits the snap. Handoff up the middle goes to Bible, and Bible is stacked up at that point. Wayne Woods takes a snap, rolls back, looks down the field. He's going to pull the ball down, fumble on the play, and it's been recovered by Germantown. Again, fourth and long. Neighbors takes the ball, fakes the handoff up the middle, pitch back goes to Moss. Moss breaks down very close. It's going to depend upon where they say his knee drug the ground. Or in this first half of this ball game, Germantown on top, 14 to nothing. Neighbors to the line, third and short. Handoff goes to Cantu. Cantu goes into the end zone for a touchdown. Woods takes the snap. Handoff goes to Bells. Bells breaks out into the open. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Patriots. Jim Bales taking that handoff. Cutting back against the grain. Rambles into the end zone. Touchdown, Patriots. Jefferson County trailing 22 to 6. Coming to the line of scrimmage comes Wayne Woods, Marky Moore, and Jim Bells in that backfield for the Patriots. First and 10 Patriots at the 12-yard line. And out goes to Bells. Bells breaks tackles across the 15, on across the 20. There's a fumble on the play, a scramble for the ball, and it looks like it's been recovered. But we'll wait before we say anything. Both ways down there. The official steps in. And it's Germantown's football. Coming to the line of scrimmage is Neighbors in that wishbone. Handoff goes to an up back. Fumble on the play and scramble for the ball. And it's been recovered by Jefferson County. The Patriots to the line first and 10. The ball spotted at their own 45-yard line. Wiz takes the ball. Wants the pitch. Does so to Marky Moore. Moore fumbles the ball and is bouncing around out there. And Jefferson County has jumped in to recover it. The Patriots against Cherokee. Neighbors with the ball, pitch back goes to Coppage. Coppage, touchdown, Germantown. Woods takes the ball, rolls back, looks down the field, pass long down the field. It's going to be intercepted. Pass intercepted at the 35, return to the 30, looking for blockers is number 17. That's Paul West, as Germantown once again threatening to score. 
And off goes to Cantu. Cantu rambles untouched into the end zone for a touchdown. In Germantown, the AAA football champions in the state of Tennessee. And 15 seconds left to go here in this ball game, in this football season. And we look across the way, dejection on the faces of a lot of the Patriots. However, as we have said several times, Jefferson County in the top two in the state of Tennessee, nothing at all to be ashamed of. We've come to the end of this ball game. Our final score, Germantown 37. All right, Coach, so County back up here to the Germantown booth. It's all over Germantown 1983 AAA State Champions.